Hi, Lori. How are you, Dr. Maven? I'm good. How's everybody? Oh, good. We're all good here. Cool. And I do believe that we're live. We had some technical difficulties before, but I think we're working now. Cool. So, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your role here at Gratz? Sure. Uh, here at Gratz, I'm director of the Hebrew and Yiddish programs and also the Certificate in Hebrew Language Instruction. So I teach a lot of classes, Hebrew and also pedagogy, and I'm also the academic advisor for Gratz Academy, which is our high school program, primarily providing dual enrollment classes for juniors and seniors. Oh, wonderful. You have a lot of hats that you wear. A few. <laughs> like everyone else here at Gratz, right? True story. Absolutely. So um, so tell me, so I called you the resident linguist. <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit more about that? And why, why do you have that title here? <laughs> well, because I'm really the person who's in charge of all of the language programs here. Um, and also linguistics is just a, an area that I've studied. And it's a place that I'm really quite fascinated with and do some teaching in. Mm. So, and I'm really particularly fascinated by different Jewish languages, which I did a webinar uh, on that a while back. I think that I remember that one. It was called, Do You Speak Jewish? That's Is the that, one. That's the one, right. That's what I do remember that. It was terrific. Thank that, you. That was a good program. Yes. So can you tell me about some of these materials that you have here? You have a book. You have a poster. Yeah. Um, this fall, I'm teaching a course on teaching Hebrew reading and writing. And so I thought it would be kind of fun today. My horoscope said today should be all about trivia. So I figured this would be a, a fun, kind of fun facts for the folks on the, uh, on the live stream. This is about the history of the alphabet. All alphabets in the world trace their origin to one single alphabet. And that alphabet was first found in 1905 by the British Egyptologist Sir Flinders Petrie. And he found it at a place in the Sinai Desert called Sarabit El Khadim, which is a, a site where there were copper and turquoise mines in, in the Sinai Desert. It's kind of on the western edge of the Sinai. And what he found there was a, a bunch of inscriptions in a language he had never seen before in a language no one had ever seen, had seen in thousands of years. And um, he recorded it, and he actually took the Sphinx back to the British Museum. I have a, a great picture of it here. It's probably a Sphinx of the goddess Hathor. And you can see on it are these markings, which look like little pictures. And in fact, there's one that looks like a shepherd's crook, and then one that looks like a house, one that looks like an eye, another shepherd's crook, and then a marking. And a few years after Petri found this, uh, a, another archaeologist, Sir um, Alan Gardner, studied these markings and figured out that they were probably symbols for uh, letters in a Semitic language. And he said that they use an acrophonic principle. In an acrophonic system, the, f the picture represents the first sound of that word that is being pictured. So if we were to draw an apple, that would stand for a. Ah. And if we had a ship, that would stand for sh. And here, the different letters uh, represented the different sounds. So the shepherd's crook is Lamed, the house is Bait or Bet, followed by the Ain or I, another shepherd's crook, a Lamed, and a Taf, which is just a marking. And that spells Labaalat, which was a Canaanite um, way of addressing the Canaanite goddess Asherah. So this particular poster that was put together by the Israel Museum traces all of the letters of the alphabet, of the olive bed, right? Up here you see there's a, a picture of an ox because 
In ancient Semitic, Aleph meant ox. Here's a picture of a house, bait or bet. Here's a, a, a hook or a vav. Vav means hook, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. You have a, a hand, a yod, which is yud. Down further, you have water, which is mayim for mem, and so on and so forth. And then this traces the development of those letters throughout ancient history. So here we have the way it was found in the Sinai. Uh, a little further on, we have the Gezer calendar, which is one of the oldest uh, inscriptions in Hebrew, ancient Hebrew, that we have, dated probably to around the time of Solomon, maybe the time a little before that. Uh, a little further down, we have the Siloam Tunnel inscription. And here you can see all of the letters that were involved in that. That dates to the time of uh, King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah. And then further down, you see that we switch from Hebrew script to Aramaic script, which is what happened during the Babylonian exile. So we get down to here, and back up in here in the ancient Hebrew script, that was also the writing that the Phoenicians used. So the, the Greek historian Herodotus said, he reported, that the Phoenicians brought the alphabet to Greece, which is probably true. The Greeks turned it on its side. Aleph became Alpha, Bet became Beta, Gimel became Gamma, and so on. And then, of course, the Romans borrowed everything from the Greeks. Uh, except for their torture methods. They borrowed that from other people. Uh, but from the Greeks, they borrowed cooking, they borrowed writing, they borrowed sports, There was, they borrowed democracy, and so uh, they borrowed the alphabet too, and that's the alphabet we use for writing in English. And even the Cyrillic alphabet, which was developed later, was actually something that was created specifically so that the Slavic languages would have a written system. That also was derived from the Greek alphabet, which we know was derived from Phoenician, which was derived from Semitic. So I can't say that the original alphabet was Hebrew, but it was the forerunner of Hebrew. This is absolutely fascinating. It really is. I mean, we just looked basically at the evolution of all of those sounds of language. Yeah. And not only that, but it seems that you could, you can tell an entire history of a people by that evolutionary chart that you just yeah. showed in their language. Yeah. It does, it explains quite a bit about the people. And one of the things that's really interesting was even after we switched to using Aramaic for our day-to-day -day writing, even after that, all of the coins that were minted in the land of Israel by independent Jewish rulers. All of them used the ancient Hebrew script on the coins. As if to say, we are a continuation of this ancient people. That's fascinating. It's great stuff. There's so much interesting stuff like this that's tucked away inside and around language. Mm. It, it really is, and I can understand why you have such an interest in this. Yeah, it really- It's a passion. It is, it is a passion, absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. My Thank pleasure. Thank you so much. Good luck with the rest of the live stream. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to move on to our next victim in this program. <laughs> Have a good time. Thank you so much. You're Thank you. Take care.